Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Gracious God, we do ask that you would prepare us to be a sanctuary for you into the world around us. May we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, the freedom that he gives, the fact that we are not righteous on our own, or rather, through the blood of Jesus, we are made righteous in your sight. We thank you, God, that you have broken off every chain that ensnares. We're thankful, God, that we have the opportunity to come into your presence. God, we ask that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, both now and forever. Father, we ask that you would guide our footsteps, direct our steps by your word, and do not let any iniquity overtake us. God, we ask that you would help us to listen, to love you with all that we are, to seek you daily. It's in Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get this started up. Good. All right. Real quickly, I need the first two rows to stand up and turn around. Just do me a favor real quick. Stand up, turn around. Stand up, come on, turn around, wave at the camera, you're live on Facebook right now, so, there you go. All right, young, sit down now. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're giving, yeah, we're, we're doing a test run of our uh, Facebook Live. All right, here we go, with Bible trivia. From the Torah, which means what? The Torah means law, good job. Number one, which command of God comes with the promise that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you? Love, uh, yeah, honor your father, uh, father and mother. It's number five. Good job. Number two, what was the signal for the people of Israel to come near to the mountain, Mount Sinai? Not to burning bush. You're, y'all are looking at the, uh, in the right direction, but that's actually not the answer. Huh? No. There, there is specifically a sign that was given. There, there was a, a cloud, a burning cloud that came, rested upon the mountain, but it was actually the blast of a trumpet. The long blast of a trumpet. So, Number three, what person or group did God tell Moses that he would utterly blot out of remembrance? Found in Exodus 19. I don't remember. That's great. Thanks. The people that had what? Mm, I don't don't know about that. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. We've talked about this group multiple Sundays in a row for the last several weeks. The Amalekites. There you go. It's Amalek. There you go. Yeah, blot out of remembrance. Thanks. All right, number four, what was the name of Moses' father-in-law who gave him advice on leading the people of Israel? Not Abraham. It was indeed Jethro. Jethro Bodine from the hillbillies. Uh, Just joking, sorry, it's bad. Yeah, all right. So, from the Nivium, which means? No, it is not writings. It is prophets, good. Number one. What straw broke the proverbial camel's back with regard to the way Saul viewed David? It's more like an anvil, if you will. That's it. David has killed his thousands, but Saul has only has killed his. I'm sorry, David killed ten, ten thousands and Saul his thousands. It was the women coming out and singing that song. Number two. 
What was the name of the judge who sacrificed his daughter due to a rash vow he made to God? Not Philip. It was who? No. All right, so I'm going to help you out. Yes, sir. It's not Jethro. You're close. So I'm going to help you out, okay? Back whenever I was a teenager, early 20s, we would go to a Chinese restaurant in in Dixon. And I made friends with a guy that was had grown up in China. And so whenever he would talk to me, he would address me, Jefa, okay? It's Jephtha. There you go. So... Jephtha is, uh, is the, was his name, so there you go. But it's not FF, it's PH. There you go. All right, number three, how many men did God whittle Gideon's troops down to before sending them to battle against the Midianites? It was indeed 300. All right, what were the weapons of these 300? It was trumpets, a, uh, a torch, and a clay pot. Good job. The, the youth are on a roll today, so Mike too. Youth and children, there we go. All right, Ketchuvim means what? Writings, good. The, the writer of Proverbs 30 asked that God give him neither of what two things? This is on one spectrum, and it's two ends of the spectrum. What? It's not strength and money, but you're close with the second. That's it. Good job. Poverty and riches. There you go. It's, it's found in uh, verses 7 through 9. And uh, it actually helped me to understand what taking the Lord's name in vain or part of taking the Lord's name in vain uh, means. It's not just about using your words. It's also about the actions that you engage in. So uh, something for you to consider there. Go back and read Proverbs uh, 30, 7 through 9. In Ecclesiastes 7, verse 2, where does the preacher say is better to go than the house of feasting, and why? It is the house of mourning, and why? Nope. It's something what? Nope. Nope. That's, they will be comforted. Uh, that's a good attempt, but no, it's not, not that one. The reason that they are to go to the house of mourning is because that is the end of all men. Number three, what type of noise does the uh, psalmist call the people to engage in before the Lord? There you go. And joyful. So we're supposed to engage in joyful noise or shout. Number four, the book of Nehemiah proclaims what of the Lord is our strength. It is indeed the joy of the Lord is our strength. So as a side note, John Piper actually made the statement that our our strength is only as great as our God is joyful. Think about that one for a minute. When you think of uh, God in the Old Testament, what do you think of? A lot of people would say anger. But where is this quote from? Nehemiah, which is in the Old Testament, right? So it's an interesting side note for us. All right, let's move into the uh, scripture for tonight. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the uh, holy city set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you, but if you will uh, fall down and worship me, uh, sorry, 
All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Were you paying attention? Bible trivia. Here we go. Number one, what disclaimer does Satan begin uh, two of these temptations? With what te- uh, disclaimer does Satan begin two of these dis- uh, There you go. If you are the Son of God. Number two, why did Satan tempt Jesus to turn the bread into stones? You're all wrong. Jesus did not, or Satan didn't tempt him to turn the stone or bread into stones. Were you paying attention? You're right, though. He was hungry after 40 days and 40 nights of uh, fasting. So, yeah, I was wondering if y'all would have been paying attention to the question. So, that good, good job on knowing the answer to why to turn the stones into bread. All right, number three, what statement was repeated four times within this passage of Scripture? It is written. Number four, from where did Jesus quote his response, man shall not live by bread alone? It was the Bible, you're right on that one. (laughs) The desert? (laughs) He's, He's in the wilderness, yeah? Verse 4, no, I'm asking where in the Old Testament does he quote it from? Nope. I actually told it on Sunday. So for those of you that weren't here on Sunday, I apologize that uh, you're left out. Huh? It's not Matthew. No, that's not in the Old Testament. I'll help you out. It's part of the law that narrows it down. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. I actually quoted that on, on Sunday. Uh, so, again, uh, Jesus was actually quoting the Old Testament. Every time he said, it is written, he was quoting the Old Testament. All right, next, oh, I'm sorry, we're not done yet. Bible trivia, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Number one, to whom was the revel- revelation given? There you go, the Apostle John, good job. Number two, on what island was John when he received the revelation? It was indeed Patmos. Number three, to how many churches was the book of Revelation written? No. What was it? No. It was seven. There you go. Number four, 24 elders sang a new song in Revelation 5, saying, you are worthy, you have redeemed us to God by what out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation? So again, the the question is what? What goes in that that spot right there? You have redeemed us to God by blank. Huh? It is indeed by your blood. The blood of Jesus is uh, for us as we're looking at it. Now, next week, John 3. Get ready for it. Be prepared next week. We all know John 3.16, but do we know the rest of John 3, that's, uh, that, uh, what that chapter is all about? All right, let's close out in prayer. Gracious God, we do ask that you would guide us, that indeed the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. We ask, God, that you would guide us, that indeed we would be faithful to understand that we do not war against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this age. May we trust in you, Jesus, with our eternal salvation. May may we understand that you have given us all that we need for righteousness. Thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, Youth, where are you going to be, Mike? Downstairs somewhere. Okay. Uh, Children, where are y'all going to be? Okay, downstairs where Mike isn't. Okay. And then uh, adults in here. Don't run, don't run, don't run.